Please Play Soul Awards for the year 2023 is officially here. It's in the description. Check it out if you haven't already seen it. All right, lads, so today we are over on BBS Simulator because in less than 12 hours' time, we are going to be getting the end of month banner for February. And as always, we're here to discuss, theorize, and speculate what character we could potentially get. As always, though, you lads can join in the fun too. Let me know your prediction in the comments below. And if you get any of the characters right, we will give you guys a shout out in tomorrow's video when we do react to the three or two new characters. Now, jumping straight into it, we've already briefly spoke about it two weeks ago in our banner prediction timeline. I'm expecting this end of my banner to be Thousand Year Blood one. Not only is the timing just right, our last Thousand Year Blood banner was over two months ago. In my opinion, we should at the very least be getting one Thousand Year Blood banner every two months. There's way too many characters. Characters, way too many moments that deserve characters in this game. And if we were to get 1,000 year blood banner every three months, we're going to be here to like 2028, 20, still trying to get characters from the anime, right? One every two months is a good schedule. It gives you enough time to save. It ensures that every two months, there's a set of exciting characters coming into the game. And it's also a good pace just to get through all these 1,000 year blood characters that deserve to be in Bleach Brave Souls. One every three months is too slow. And one every month, in my opinion, I'm sure it's going to happen. I mean, we saw it last year, near the end of the year that we had, you know, back to back almost literally back to back in november mid month and end of month were thousand year blood war i'm sure every now and then we are going to get moments like that a thousand year blood banner every month every two weeks but at the latest we should be getting one thousand year blood banner every two months now one also thing to keep in mind is that traditionally end of month february has always been the first big banner of the year and more often than not, it's a limited time banner. Four years ago, was Senjumaru, Kirio, and also Senjumaru in a Thousand Year Blood banner. A year after that, it was Kanfi on World, Tsukushima, Ginjo, and Mayuri. A year after that, it was Spirits of and with you, Yoroichi and Soifon. And then a year after that, even though it was a premium banner, they still made sure to give us a big banner to start off the year. In this case, a remake of Quinty Ichigo. And the characters themselves were also really good. I mean, Quinty Ichigo was the first character to have SP boost and Frenzy Plus 2. Tensa was an insane farmer, was essentially Thousand Year Blood War 16, Ichigo, and also Uryu put together in one character. Anishin was also really good in Brave Battles, but he was also our first, like, really good Brave Battle character that was premium that we have received in, like, the last four years. So essentially, end of month February is always like the first big banner. It's more often not limited. And since our last Thousand Year Blood banner was over two months ago, right now, I think it's a great time to give us Thousand Year Blood one. But with that, the question is, what characters will we actually get? And we're still in like that tra transitional period, right? Where are we going to get season two characters? Are we going to get season one? Now, near the end of the year, when we finally started to get Thousand Year Blood War anime characters, we were strictly focusing on season one. And we were going in some type of chronological order. They kickstarted the anniversary with... Flashback characters, Yachiru, Gemrisa, and Chojuro. Then we got characters from episode 1, 2, and 3. They were all Quincy's. This also tied into the next banner, which was the first invasion. And in that case, we got Esno and Byakuya. For the most part, when it came to characters based off the episodes, we were going in some type of chronological order, covering some of the bigger moments from season one. But then that all got ruined two weeks later when we started to get season two characters. And like the question at the time when these characters came out was like, how are they doing these characters so early? They clearly showed that when it came to season one characters, it took at least six months for them to come into the game. For those that don't know, can I plan character six months in advance? It doesn't necessarily mean it takes them six months to make the character. But the way the anime production works and the way Caleb make their characters, these season one characters, why it took so long for these characters to come into the game is that these characters clearly started development after the episodes were done. And that's reflected in their gameplay, especially their sob one, where their sob one was almost one-to-one -one with the anime. But then we started to get season two characters and it kind of ruined that. Not only did it feel weird to get Senjimaru without her Bankai, their soul bombs more so were also not one-to-one -one with the anime as we saw with season one characters. And the reason for that is because, again, if you're planning characters six months in advance, how can you get season two characters out when the anime only ended like a month or two ago? And that's because these characters were made while the episodes were being animated. And that's why their soul bombs aren't nearly as one-to-one -one with the anime like we saw with season one characters. I mean, true sure you got Ichigo. While, yes, they are still anime characters, their visuals are still, the you know, the same as the anime. It's not a big of a deal. But true Shiga Ichigo, for example, his sub bomb used the manga as the source material when compared to how the anime did. And you can see the difference how both Ichigos do their Get a Good Juji show. And that's essentially why Caleb were able to get these season two characters out so early. And since then, they were kind of just jumping all over the place as opposed to how they were doing season one characters going in some type of chronological order. So when it comes to this upcoming Thousand Year Blood banner, they could still go back to season one. There's still plenty of characters from season one that deserve characters, in my opinion. Thousand Year Blood War Bankai Yamamoto with the anime colors. Driscoll deserves a character, in my opinion. Ishin Misaki was kind of like a category. Robert Shinsui. I feel like these characters' moments are too big in the anime to be skipped over, and I'm hoping they get characters in the future. 
but also at the same time, most importantly, if we go back six months ago, that takes us to the end of August. Which at that point, I believe around seven episodes of Thousand Year Blood Run would have been done and fully animated. So I'm expecting these next set of Thousand Year Blood Run anime characters to be based on Season 2. And unlike the Season 2 character that we have been getting thus far, they're going to be more close to the anime with their soul bombs almost being one-to-one -one with how the anime did it. So with that in mind, I guess that upcoming banner, it took me long enough to say it, can be any character, I believe, from like the first seven episodes of Thousand Year Blood War. But maybe at the same time, Caleb want to do what they did with season one, go in chronological order, instead of just jumping around. I wouldn't mind that though, because the first two episodes of Thousand Year Blood War season two weren't that exciting for me. It was the later stuff that came that I'm more excited for. But if they do want to go in chronological order, like they do with season one, some type of chronological order, they might break it every now and then. We could potentially see this upcoming banner be BG9 and Soifon. That's the first big fight of the anime. But who would the third character be? Maybe there won't be a third character. Maybe they would like to throw in an Omaida. I'd be down for it. Why not? I'd rather that than no third character. At the same time, this is actually my main prediction. We could get what we see in episode 2. Toshiro, using his Hollow Bankai. We could get a Sangdu, first time playable in the game. And we also could get a Basby. And this banner would, like, work really well. Whether it's in this upcoming end of month of February or in a future banner. You have a popular Soripa in the form of Toshiro. And even though it would be our third thousand year blood of Toshiro, it would still feel somewhat fresh considering that it should be him using his Hollow Bankai. We would get a popular Sturmwriter remake in the form of Basby. And we would also get a new Sturmwriter first time playable in the form of Sangdu. That would be, in my opinion, a really exciting banner, especially if the character's visuals are good. And of course, if the characters are good themselves, it would also give me more reason to summon. But of course, if they do just want to jump around and just give us random characters and banners that are just exciting, not going any that type of chronological order. I mean, at that point, we could get Sargent, Bambietta, Shinji, Mask, Renji, Bankai Rose, Esnot, Byakia, Rukia. We realistically could get any of these characters, any of these banners, any character that does something in the first seven or so episodes of Thousand Year Blood or Season 2. But I would like to think they would try and go in some type of chronological order. And I would hope that's the case because that would give us time to save, knowing what's next to come. Like how it kind of was during the OG days of Bleach Brave Souls, where every end of month was progressing through the story. So for example, if this banner was, let's say, Soifon BG9, that would maybe give you the expectation that the next banner would be Toshiro, Sangdu, Basby. Then after that, you would expect Sajin, Bambietta, Shinji. So it could give you time to save, maybe skip this banner, knowing that the next banner to come is someone that you're waiting for. So yeah, I guess it realistically could be anyone from Season 2, Season 1. I'm expecting Thousand Year Blood War. Just to play a safe guess, though, I'm going to say Basby, Sangdu, and also Toshiro. I have been seeing a lot of people throw around the Femrita. It's been a popular phrase in the community to say Femrita February. I'd be perfectly down for that, especially if it means Giselle comes to the game. That would be the most exciting banner for me. And because everyone's saying it, it's kind of giving me the expectation that we could get Giselle tomorrow. And technically, it is possible, considering that episode was animated over six months ago. But I don't know. I feel like it would more so like to start season two with stuff that happens in the first three or so episodes. But with that said, now that we spoke about what cards we could be getting, now let's have a look what the characters could be and what we can potentially expect because we can actually have some type of expectation when it comes to what these characters will actually be. For starters, if we look at the Guild Quest schedule, this isn't guaranteed to happen. But what we do see as of late is that Caleb design characters or most of release characters when their guild quest is available. I prefer it this way too. It means if I do get a new character, I can showcase them at their best when they want to be used when they're still new. It was always annoying a few years ago when a character would come out for guild quest and I can't even showcase them in guild quest for like another two months because the quest isn't available. If we look at mid month, for example, we had a range Quincy killer. The quest was available when the character came out. And then we also recently had the range squad zero human guild quest where they wanted you to use Ikaku. So maybe for this upcoming end of month banner, maybe if they want to more so be used in guild quest, we could potentially expect a range of spider killer. We could potentially expect a range of Ronki Killer. Preferably a character with both of those killers, that would be really good. And maybe we could see a melee Ronki Killer or a melee no affiliation killer. It's not guaranteed a character could have these killers, but it's entirely possible. Maybe a new melee Captain Killer. Which, I mean, if we were to get Sangdu, BGN, or Basby, them having Captain Killer wouldn't be too far off. Additionally, and this is what I feel like might sell the banner the most, is that we might finally be getting the long-awaited Techni character that is designed to farm speed super links or potions. Because, as of right now, the last character we got in the Technic attribute to farm Super Links or Potions was Gin. He's almost a year old. At this point in time, too, they've also done a character in every attribute. And Technique is next. It's guaranteed to be Technique. And every end of month banner, more often than not, does give us a new Super Links of Farmer. I mean, if we look at last year, for example, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 out of the 12 end of month banners gave us a Super Links of Farmer. 
If we look at her, they received four. Power has also received four. Recently, they just got Mashiro. She's a super length of farmer, but through her search rate, that's why she's not appearing here. Speed has received four, and Mind has received four. But Technique, right now, only has access to three. So, if we are to get a super length of farmer for this end of month banner, assuming it's five in your blood war, it's almost very likely. And I would like to think it's guaranteed to be a Technique character with the super length of potion skill. Hopefully, to the likes of Senjimaru. That's what I'm really hoping. These characters are way just better characters that ignore Iron Skin, have like really high damage output. I'd rather that than what we have been getting as of late, where characters, you know, have an increased chance to inflict status on it's like Gin. Gin's a great farmer, but I'd rather my characters go through Iron Skin than characters that have an increased chance to inflict status on it's. So whatever this upcoming banner will be, whatever the character will be, I'm expecting one of them to be a Technic Super Links of Farmer. That then takes us into our Limit Breaker character of the month. Because for those that don't know, every end of month since July, we have been getting a Limit Breaker character. Our July end of month Limit Breaker character was Yachiru. The month after that was Kilgay. The month after that was Halloween Nini. The month after that was Rukia. And the month after that was Ichibei. We've yet to see back-to-back -back Limit Breaker characters in the same attribute. It went speed, heart, mind, power, and then also technique. They did a full rotation of the attribute wheel. Once each of it was done, it meant that a mind, power, speed, technique, or heart character could be done again as the Limit Breaker character of the month. In this case, they started off with mind, and then they did heart. So in this upcoming banner, I'm expecting either a technique, speed, or power character designed for Limit Breaker, which most likely means they can be broken, right? Every Limit Breaker character in the game is usually some of the best characters is almost instantly an SST character. But since I am expecting a Technique Super Links of Farmer, I feel like there's a very good chance this upcoming banner could be either a broken speed character or a broken power character. I'm hoping a broken power character considering that, you know, speed right now, it's entirely possible it could be a speed character, but speed has already like really good characters. We don't need any more broken speed characters. Power, as we all know right now, is probably the worst attribute in the game and they definitely do need the support, right? Right now, the best power character you know, top three for the most part is Thousand Yabiru Yamoto, Ichigo, 8th Anniversary, and also Rukia. Not in any order, by the way. Obviously, if Rukia was the Limit Breaker character of the month, and she easily could have been, like, top two in the game, but that SA2 really does hold her back. Still a great character, still one of the best in the game, but not, like, top two, which she could have been had that SA2 just been a normal SA2. If it wasn't a hill, she would have been absolutely perfection. Perfection. So I guess this video has gone long enough now, but quick recap, I'm expecting Thousand Year Blood War. End of month February is traditionally a hype limited time battle, and the timing right now for Thousand Year Blood War is just perfect. If it isn't, I'm be disappointed, especially considering that two weeks ago, uh, these characters, you know, to no one's surprise, was very, very low effort. The artwork was bad, the character's visual were bland, the character choicing was bad in my opinion, and I would like to think that the lack of effort put into this banner means more effort put into the end of month banner, and Thousand Year Blood War characters deserve that more effort. I would like to think that we're finally going to start getting Season 2 characters with anime visuals more so on their soul bomb, and in that case, it could be BG9, could be Soifun, maybe on Maidom, could be Toshiro, Basby, and also Sangdu. I'm hopeful and jumping on the trend of Femme Ritza February. We'd love to see a new Giselle, Latoto, and also Meninis. And in terms of the characters, I'm expecting a Technique character with the super links of potion skill, hopefully through the likes of Senjimaru, where they're, where they're that broken, so I can have an easier time farming speed super links or potions. And with that, I'm expecting a broken speed or power character, more so designed for Limit Breaker. And hypothetically, if it was Femrita Febre, and it was Giselle, Lord Toto and Meninis, I could see Giselle being speed, maybe the Limit Breaker character of the month. I could see Meninis being a power Brave Battle character, and I could see Lord Toto being the Technic super links of farmer. That would be kind of perfect in my opinion. But that's my prediction. In the comments below, let me know yours. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.